and uh, as, as Rana mentioned, uh, I'm tech lead at SoulServe. Uh, I've been working for a while already. And today I'd like to share with you uh, my knowledge and uh, some experience about uh, login, uh, customizing uh, logging experience into Windows. Basically, uh, I will give you some overview uh, how uh, authentication to Windows happens, how the stuff can be uh, customized, how this can be changed, and uh, also uh, describe a few, few things uh, from what I've been doing so, uh, here at SoulServe for so, some period of time. Uh, so uh, the agenda will be next. Uh, first, uh, it's history. I will I will uh, briefly describe what has changed in, in Windows authentication since Windows XP and uh, for today for Windows 10 and 11. Uh, basically, it's like Gen and credential provider. Then I will uh, briefly talk about uh, Windows interactive logon. At a very high level, we'll describe how this process happens, like what components uh, are involved into that uh, process and. Uh, uh, what they are doing. Next, uh, it will be a credential provider overview, basically the main topic of our discussion. Uh, I will uh, describe what, what it is, a uh, few things about credential providers, such as uh, brokers, uh, filters, and credential provider itself. Uh, then it will be a small, uh, we'll have a demo. I will walk you through a sample code. Uh, by providing some descriptions about interfaces that has to be implemented in order to, to customize a uh, logging experience in Windows, basically, in order to create your own uh, credential provider. And uh, the last bullet is the Wagon credential provider. I will give you some overview about uh, maybe best practices or like at least for how uh, I and uh, how my team is doing the troubleshooting and debugging. Uh, a credential provider in order to find some problems and basically doing the development uh, phase itself as well. So let's start uh, from the first topic, uh, sorry, not topic, from the first bullet. So the history. Uh, before a uh, credential provider uh, was introduced, Windows has ha had the concept of uh, uh, GINA, basically graphic interaction and authentication protocol. That protocol uh, facilitates uh, ability to log in into the system. And uh, that, pro that kind of capability was in Windows XP. Uh, here I have a small diagram which depicts uh, kind of, again, at a very high level, an architecture of that process. Basically, uh, we have a WinLogon uh, process that loads uh, Gina uh, dialog and uh, everything resides in session zero. And uh, those things communicate with uh, uh, local security authority service. Uh, so this kind of uh, architecture has few uh, downsides. So first of all, uh, in case you're Gina, you implement it, like WinLog1 is very sensitive uh, process. And in case it crashes uh, or it works uh, inappropriately on your system, your system might become broken uh, entirely. So imagine if you implemented something bad in the, in the Gina and you would like to test that stuff and uh, WinLog1 loads uh, your Gina and it crashed. So you won't be able to log into system at all. And uh, also uh, the other thing is that uh, basically, it resides in session zero, which is mostly for services. It's also a pretty sensitive session. And uh, the implementation itself for Gina is based on uh, function pointers and load library technique. So you have to, uh, in order to implement this uh, kind of custom login experience, you have to load a specific library. You have to get function pointers, of the, uh, and there are a lot of functions uh, to be uh, retrieved and you have to implement all of those things. You have to manage all that memory, all, the, all those pointers and so on. It's not very convenient. Uh, and probably because of that, at some point, uh, somebody on Microsoft re revisited how they did uh, their syndication and starting with Windows uh, Vista, they have changed, uh, uh, they have changed uh, this, this, this architecture and they introduced a credential provider concept. So credential provider, uh, again, here we have at the right, we have small diagram, which at the high level depicts uh, what actually happens. So we still have been logged on, but now been logged on is moved to session, to user session, not in the se uh, to, uh, not is in session zero, but now uh, it lives in logged on by default, uh, in session, in user session by default. This been logged on process executes a new additional process, which is called logon UI, and logon UI itself now loads credential providers. So now, in case you did something wrong, log on UI, uh, the stuff that may crash, it will be log on UI, and it may it, it will not lead uh, to having like broken system entirely. So at some point, even Windows might be smart enough 
to understand that some particular credential provider is crashing it constantly and it might not it may start uh, stop uh, using it at all and use other credential providers that it has in, in the list and uh, few things about the credential provider itself so again it's loaded by uh, logon ui no new process which is uh, which also lives in session in user session now what is more important than what uh, is different from Gina, it's a com based model so all you, all you have to do is uh, basically uh, uh, inherit uh, you, you need to have an implementation that inherits uh, some specific interfaces and uh, by that it's, it's much more easier basically when compared to uh, function pointers to implement those things and to manage those things uh, and here at the bottom just a summary a sum, a summary about Gina uh, so basically reliability concerns uh, problem in software can cause the entire system to become broken again if you, if your Gina is bad you may not be able even to look into the system at all it's very hard to implement and it has to it is hard to maintain and yeah so and time proven uh, proved that credential provider actually it's a good approach because uh, it was introduced in Vista they already have Windows 11 and uh, Microsoft still uh, sticks with uh, this uh, concept of credential provider okay so next slide uh, by the way in case you have questions uh, please kind of ask them uh, right away uh, he, here on this diagram, uh, I will describe a bit uh, Windows Interactive Logon process. Basically, what happens, and we'll, we'll provide you a few terms that we going to that are going to be used uh, through the presentation, and uh, so that like we, we are on the same page what we are talking about. So first of all, we have uh, Win Logon launches Logon UI. Here is the diagram we have, and do we, I hope you see my mouse uh, when I'm moving and like okay. So in logon uh, basically a process that interacts with a local sec uh, security uh, uh, authority service uh, with logon then uh, starts logon ui or credential ui credential ui what it is i will speak uh, in the next slides uh, so basically it loads logon ui and then the logon ui queries uh, queries each credential provider for the number of credentials it wants to enumerate so uh, how it works basically logon ui and from my understanding standpoint so logon ui goes to the registry looks what is what credential providers are registered logon ui then uh, instantiates each credential uh, provider and ask each credential provider uh, what credentials it supports how many credentials it supports uh, the term might be confusing like credentials credential provider cred but like credentials itself by username and password and so on but from a credential provider standpoint what credentials means is uh, basically we have a credential provider uh, that gives user an ability to provide his credentials and uh, in order to provide his credentials user needs to interact with credential provider credentials object basically credential provider credentials concept let's say in this way uh, and uh, one credential provider may have many may provide may, uh, many abilities uh, for user to provide his credential for example, here we have uh, we have depicted credential provider that supports certificate authentication, that supports password authentication, that supports biometric sign-in and smart card sign-in. What it means basically, one credential provider supports multiple credentials, and the user basically, uh, as it, as it states here, uh, Logon UI displays the tiles. Tiles is something. Uh, uh, came from Windows, uh, uh, Windows like Vista, Windows Seven. Uh, is if you recall, during login you had to choose like uh, when Windows started, uh, there was an ability to pick uh, like the pictogram that you, you can click, and then you uh, once you click on that pictogram, you will be able to provide you were able to provide your credentials. So that that is called tile. And by tile, by selecting uh, tile, you actually select uh, credentials uh, that you will be using, like again, certificate, password, or biometric, or smart card, or PIN, or prox, or whatever. I mean, how, how what you would like to implement, you can do that. Uh, so you, after user selects the tile, uh, user, uh, sorry, Logon displays the tile, user selects the tile, and then uh, user provides credential and Logon UI. Basically, for example, password here, it will, uh, credentials will be returned back to credential provider. Credential provider will return this back to Logon UI. Logon UI will return this back to Win Logon, and Win Logon uh, will actually 
proceed with uh, validation of them against a local security authority service. So basically, local security authority service is responsible for actual authentication. Credential providers are just for like, gathering your credentials. Uh, so if, if no questions here, I will go next slide. Yeah, so guys, so if, uh, sorry, Andrei, if uh, someone has any questions, you can unmute and ask, and uh, you can use chat also. Thank you. Mm, okay, so now to the next slide. So here I just made a screenshot of uh, my Windows 10 uh, like work machine uh, to, to kind of um, explain uh, those like tiles, credentials, credential provider itself, and so on. So here we have, we see, uh, you can see uh, two uh, uh, rectangles. One is red, second is yellow. So let's start from this one. So red rectangle uh, shows you uh, so-called tiles, basically the same uh, like which we had in Windows 7, but they were located differently. Now in Windows 10, we have them here. So once you pick any of those, uh, you will be able to provide some credentials here. So here we have tiles. And also what, uh, what is depicted here is that we have two, uh, here uh, my system actually has at least two credential providers. One credential provider is default, which is uh, like pre-installed with Windows, basically a password credential provider that gives user an ability to log in this password. And that credential provider has two tiles here. One is for administrator already, and one is for test user. So that once you click, for example, on administrator, you will not be required to provide a username. You will be, required, you will be able just to provide a password and login. And the same stuff for a test user. So we have two tiles here. And the uh, next one is my custom provider. And this custom provider right now uh, provides only one tile, only one credentials, and uh, it's selected right now. And here it is its representation on the right uh, in the yellow uh, square box, in the yellow uh, box. So uh, why I want, uh, I, I want to stick here for a second in this slide and just explain you a few things regarding uh, capabilities that Windows by default provides. So by default, there is a limited uh, list of controls that you can use uh, in your custom credential provider. Like here, for example, you have uh, one control for image, one control for uh, for some help, for some text, one control for ability to provide username for text box, one control to provide password, submit button, checkbox, combo box, and and link, and th that's it. So. The location of those, uh, appearance of those, uh, like colors, all those things are handled by Windows. So what you what you can do, which you can just uh, like ask Windows that I'd like to have, like for example, image and uh, password field on my credential provider, and that's it. Windows will, will handle all, all of that for you. So at some point, that's useful. I mean, in handy, you don't need to draw all those things. You don't need to um, care about like moving them and displaying them appropriately on the screen. But it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. So you, you can't actually, like, for example, in, in case you'd like to come up with another approach to login or show something to the user, some additional text, for example, it's not like you, you won't be able to do that by default on the Windows. However, uh, what you can do, you can create your own in window and basically create your own window instead of uh, this uh, default, default uh, controls that Windows provides. Windows provides. And I will show you this, in, and you will see this in the demo how how this can be done. Actually, how it looks. Uh, so next slide is about credential provider overview itself. And again, credential provider is not an enforcement mechanism. It's just a facility that gives an ability to gather credentials. So gather those credentials, and by gathering those, credential provider just serializes them and passes them to uh, to the system, to local security authority service to validate them. Again, just gather credentials and the responsibility of authorizing, creating security tokens, validating security policies, all of those things uh, happens on local, local authority security service or some authentication packages that can also be customized, but that's not the topic of our discussion. Uh, okay, next thing. So in this slide, it's, it started to be technical uh, already. And uh, here I'd like to speak about uh, some very first uh, things that credential providers and system actually does uh, when it uh, works with your credential provider. So again, as I, as I said previously, 
uh, there are a set of interfaces that needs to be implemented uh, for, in order to, to have like custom credential provider. And uh, in those interfaces, there is uh, one method that I'd like to highlight this set usage scenario is the very first method that has been called by logon UI on each credential provider and on your custom credential provider as well. So by calling this method, uh, system tells uh, your provider uh, in which scenario it's going to be, kind of which scenario is currently happening. So is it log on, unlock, password change, and so on. So by, why this is important? Because your pro while you develop credential provider, you may you may uh, focus on developing certain behaviors, for example, for logon when having change password totally like aside from your implementation and uh, Windows will switch to default behavior, for example. So uh, by this, basically Windows will tells you what scenario is going to happen and you is a return as okay, like <laughs> being very, very uh, uh, like concrete here or returns yeah not input and uh, that's all so windows will understand that you don't implement this uh, scenario and it will uh, do something differently and here i highlighted uh, five uh, again there are, there are predefined set of uh, scenarios that can happen there are five of those and uh, the first one is logon scenario it's basically when you log into the, to the system uh, like the first boot and when you see like a desktop uh, and uh, you would like to, you see like prompt you are prompted to provide credentials uh, you will provide those and that scenario will be log on because the, obviously there were no user yet there is no user yet no other session is created for the user so you will have to log on uh, to new session also i have in, in bold here unlock uh, scenario because starting from windows 10 uh, it's default behavior at some point that you can have user switch. So what it is, for example, you uh, launched your machine, you logged in with user A, and then you locked your machine. So now you see credential provider, like and it asks you to provide your credential. So at this point, user B can can come to your machine, provide his credentials, and he, that user will be able to log in. Uh, what will happen behind the scene basically users A's windows session will be disconnected and uh, users b session will be created and the user b will be logged in everything what was happening for user a will still remain but it will be like in disconnected state so you you, you won't be able to simultaneously uh, like use both sessions it's possible on windows terminal servers but, uh, but for windows 10 it's not but it's not possible by default uh, but yeah you will be able to actually uh, have different user be locked into the same machine. And for this case, uh, even unlock. So whenever you lock your machine again, and for example, user B locked his machine and user A will uh, provide his credentials, uh, system will still tell that this is log one scenario. Even though you are uh, you you uh, unlocking, you are unlocking your session, not logging in from the scratch, but still the system will tell you that this is log one. Uh, however, there is also unlock workstation scenario. What this is about. So again, as I said, Windows 10 by default allows user switch. However, there is a configuration set, uh, there is a possibility to configure that behavior uh, through group policy or through registry. It doesn't matter, but that's that's configurable. So you may uh, forbid doing uh, user switch at all. So for example, if user A locks his workstation, only user A now can unlock his uh, workstation, nobody else. So at this point, user will, uh, system will, will, will explicitly tell you that this is unlocked scenario and uh, you will be needed to do uh, certain things. Uh, next one is ch change password. It's obviously when you when you have to change your password. Uh, the last, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this one is cred UI. So what is cred UI? Uh, cred UI is the window uh, which you see when you would like to do uh, remote login, for example. And I will show you this uh, to be more specific what I'm talking about. Oops. Second. So this window, uh, like when you when you do uh, like connect to remote machine, you pick like IP address and then you press connect you will see uh, uh, this window and uh, this window is called cred ui 
sol. Okay. So that's credit UI. And also, uh, for example, if you would like your credential provider to be loaded in that scenario as well, uh, you, you should implement this uh, scenario and uh, provide uh, like, implement, like implementation and other things for, for that particular scenario. Otherwise, window, uh, Windows will just ignore your provider. And the last one is Flap, Prelogon Access Provider. So that's, that's uh, a usage scenario which, um, which uh, can, which implements, like, sorry. In case you, you would like to do something before you actually log in into the system, like imagine you have this login screen and you would like to, to log into VPN, for example. Cisco provides that functionality. Uh, so there is a possibility to, to, to implement this uh, like uh, scenario. And by that scenario, uh, Windows will understand that your credential provider is capable of doing things before uh, you actually has logged in. And you will be able to like provide some implementation and do some certain things. Again, Cisco gives the ability you to log into VPN before you log into the system. For example, your credentials, you may be not aware, uh, you may not be able to provide your credentials uh, because of not being in a uh, corporate network. So by this prelogon uh, access provider, you can first connect to VPN and then provide your credentials, and then you will be logged in successfully. Okay, so that's about like five main, uh, not main, but only five workflows and usage scenarios that are currently supported by Windows. And, uh, and I'll switch to the next slide. It's about credential provider interfaces. So again, this is a COM-based model. And in order to implement your credential provider, uh, you have to uh, kind of implement the, uh, uh, at least two interfaces needs to be implemented. First interface is iCredential provider. So this interface gives uh, an ability to log on UI or credential UI to interact with your credential provider, basically to uh, ask how many credentials it has, uh, set a usage scenario, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, kind of uh, main interface for credential provider. And then uh, for each credentials, for each tile, which uh, your credential provider provides, those needs to implement this interface, I credential provider credential interface. So by this interface, uh, kind of system, is able to, to interact actually with your tile. For example, serialize, serialize credentials, uh, show UI, like uh, ask about certain fields on your uh, UI, like, uh, like this combo boxes, uh, links, uh, like check boxes, links, and so on. So that happens through this interface. In addition to that, uh, there are a few more interfaces. Uh, one is iCredential Provider Events. So that's interface, it uh, gives an ability to credential provider to have uh, a sync callback mechanism to, to talk with local UI to say, uh, and there, are, there is only one method uh, available in this interface. By this method, uh, credential provider notifies local UI that something has changed within his credentials and please renumerate because maybe some credentials would like to be used by default and log in without showing UI uh, once more. And the same stuff for credentials itself. So I credential provider credentials events give possibility, uh, provides a synchronous callback mechanism uh, used by credentials to interact with, uh, with logon. Like again, uh, like for example, showing a combo box and uh, understanding which which item is actually selected can, can be happening through this interface. Also, this interface gives you an ability to get a parent uh, window in case you would like to create handle of, of, of a parent window in case you'd like to create your own window and basically be child of, uh, of desktop to this like, window which you see uh, during the login process. Uh, in addition, uh, so these are main. However, uh, again, that's that was a time uh, credential provider was introduced. It's probably 2006 or something like that, right? I don't recall exactly. So from that time, uh, there were a few extensions made for some of those interfaces. Like I know that uh, credential, I credential provider credentials has V2 already, and probably for events as well. Uh, all of those can be seen in the documentation. I just want to highlight main things and like just point you that that stuff is available. And in case you'd like to understand more, you can always find more data in Microsoft documentation regarding this. Uh, so now I will 
from describing interfaces, I will switch to some uh, behaviors of the credential provider, as I pointed in, in at the beginning. There were a few things like credential provider itself. Then there is a dropping credential providers and filtering credential providers. So now I will speak about dropping. So what it is basically. Uh, Windows uh, gives you an ability to implement a credential provider that will drop uh, some, for example, native credential provider. Then it might, might be useful. Imagine that you that you are building a system that has some uh, that requires your user to actually authorize with your backend, for example, right? Like imagine you provide this sort. And uh, the ob obvious uh, thing would be uh, for you to actually have, have the user be authorized within your system. And uh, again, the obvious stuff would be to do that only once and as soon as uh, as quick as possible when user logs into the system. Uh, and because having like user login to Windows and then login into your system might be a bad user experience. So you, you kind of know that you have ability to customize credential provider. You created your own credential provider. And uh, once user provides credentials on that credential provider, first what it does, it may go to your system, send username and password there, validate it there, establish some kind of session, return back some data to credential provider saying, okay, I have authorized that user on the back end. Please proceed with Windows authentication. And now, uh, credential provider, uh, your credential provider will provide credentials to the Windows. Windows will uh, use them and will unlock you your session. At this point, you have you have access to the desktop. One thing and another thing, you you have a session established, some kind of session established between you, uh, your endpoint, and your backend. And now you can leverage functionalities that your system provides. Again, maybe it's a SSO or something else. Uh, at this point, imagine that user decided to log in, uh, like user started your machine, and it sees few tiles. It sees like your credential provider, which might say, for example, like my system name and uh, some something like that. And besides that, it also sees default credential provider. And user decided to pick default credential provider. So at this point, user uh, uh, chooses default credential provider, provide credentials there, uh, and uh, have access to the desktop. However, since it was default credential provider, no interaction between your uh, between your system, your backend, and uh, credential provider has happened because like you, there is no way you can implement something in default credential provider. So in order to uh, kind of fix that problem, let's say in this way, uh, there is an ability to drop uh, default credential provider by uh, doing some uh, like by providing an experience to the user. Uh, that user already used to, for example, it will it can be the same controls, the same view which we have for default credential provider, but it will be your robot. And not if, what it will do basically again, Win Logon will start Logon UI. Logon UI now will start custom credential provider, your your credential provider, which drops default password credential provider. And now when user provides credentials before they actually go to Win Logon, they will go to your provider like from uh, like it will go to your provider. You can take those credentials. You can send this uh, to the cloud, do, do whatever you want with them. After after processing those credentials, you can pro pro provide them to the default credential provider. And only after that, it, they will go to Logon UI and then to within Logon and then uh, to the authentication itself. So basically, Roper is kind of an ability to uh, in kind of drop uh, default things and uh, do certain things before actually credentials are serialized to the system. And here we have a few things like, yeah, it implements the same interfaces. In case you implement a proper, it, it, the same stuff, you have to implement I credential provider uh, interface, I credential provider credentials interface. Uh, and yeah, it, it drops concrete credential provider to intercept calls. And what I will just describe, the Logon makes a call to, call to Logon UI, Logon UI makes a call to custom provider, and custom provider makes a call to wrapper provider. So that's what here it is. Uh, uh, however, you may decide, okay, I don't want to bother with dropping credential providers. I don't want to bother with doing anything else except my credential provider. And Windows actually gives you that possibility as well. That is called Windows Credential Provider Filter. Uh, so that's the functionality that Windows provides that, that uh, you can use to actually force the system to do not show credential providers that you don't want to be shown. Like for example, in 
the case I described, when you have like some backend, you 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 need to be sure that actually user logs in using your credential provider because you, you need to have your system be, be healthy and be in workable state. So at this point, you can you can implement I credential provider filter interface, and uh, there are two two methods actually, and I will speak about both of two. But uh, like there are, they have different purposes, and but for some reason, Microsoft has only one uh, place for them. But uh, yeah, let's start from filter. So this method basically how it's depicted here. Uh, when system starts, so now first uh, it will load your filter, not the credential provider itself. It will load your filter. Uh, it will take the list of uh, credential providers that currently are uh, registered on the system. It will pass that list to your filter, and uh, your filter will then uh, perform like create another list, which will say, "Okay, I I want to show only like, for example, password or router or just my custom provider, and that's it." Uh, so basically, like your system may have ten providers, but at the end, after the process, after your filter is invoked and your functionality happened. Only one provider will be shown. Uh, so one point here is that uh, imagine that you have implemented filter, and somebody else has implemented filter. So filters are loaded. Uh, so there is a GUID, uh, and filters are, are loaded in certain uh, order. So uh, for example, if if some I have implemented filter which filtered out all everything and left only custom and proper. So in case my filter is invoked before somebody else's filter, so that else filter will already obtain uh, this list not that list but but this list like already filtered out so you, you need to be sure which grid you pick and uh, you need to be sure uh, that like your filter uh, processes uh, for example first or last depends on uh, on the experience you would like to have so that's the one method and the other method is uh, also in the credential provider filter is update remote credentials why it's useful? Uh, this method is useful when you implement a remote uh, workflow. Uh, again, you recall this CRED UI that I showed you. Uh, so when you have your physical machine and you would like to RDP to a remote machine, uh, like some other machine uh, that you like to use as like a remote desktop. So when you, uh, when you connect to that machine, you have to provide a username and password. So once you provide those, uh, they are sent to the remote machine to log you in in the remote machine itself. And there is a possibility to intercept those credentials and, for example, redirect those to some specific credential provider. And that's why we have this update remote credentials uh, API. So what, is, what happens, uh, system loads filter, system calls this method and provides a structure uh, where all credentials are serialized. And now you can deserialize those credentials. You can like even like take username and passwords from, from that structure, and uh, in case they're not protected, and uh, redirect them, for example, to your credential provider. So that now, whenever somebody logs in into the remote machine, even though it has provided username and password in physical machine in this CRED UI, still your remote machine can can uh, now uh, look, uh, intercept those credentials, take those credentials, send them to your cloud. And authorize you with your cloud and return back to the system and log into the system. So now you will have like even remote machine can be uh, fully uh, available for your functionality. I hope it was clear. <laughs> and again, in case you have questions, please ask because I'm not sure if, 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 if or this is very interesting, or you are I saying something <laughs> totally wrong. Okay. Uh, next slide. Is just for inform informative purposes. Again, uh, credential provider is a com based stuff. Uh, so, uh, and here I just depicted a few places uh, where where those are kind of registered and how uh, those are used by the system. So, first of all, you have to register a com object. Uh, you have a class which is which implements some uh, like which is a com object itself. So, you have to register it. Then, in case this is credential provider, they needs to be the entry in the registry needs to be created in this at this place. Uh, with some friendly name for your uh, credential provider. In case you create a wrapper, uh, the same the same place is used, but uh, 
everything that's required is it is called Wropet class ID. So basically, uh, in case you create a Wropper, you need to specify which exactly class, uh, which exact, which exact provider you are blocking. So in case you wrap, for example, native password range provider, then this CLS ID will be an, an ID of uh, native password credential provider. And the filter has its own place uh, in the registry, in the same stuff. So in case you have you implemented the filter, you need to register a filter at this, at this place. So from, uh, from here, that's kind of it about the presentation, I mean, about talking uh, from, about some documentations things. So now we can switch to demo. But before doing that, I will just uh, step ahead a bit. I will show next slide, which has links. And I'd like to highlight few things just not to forget. Uh, so you'll be able to read a lot of stuff here. But what I'm going to show you right now is a uh, walkthrough uh, uh, using sample code. So Microsoft provides a sample of uh, credential providers. Uh, and you can use that sample to build your, your credential, to build credential provider, to play with it, and so on. Uh, so there is a few places where you can find this. So first of all, on the GitHub itself, on the GitHub, uh, there is a place where you can find credential provider, and that credential provider is uh, it, it implements. There is only one sample that implements a full control credential provider, like the ones I shown you on the screenshot uh, at the beginning, where you have all all those combo like combo box, check box, few uh, edit boxes, and so on. Uh, there is another sample which is a bit broader, and uh, uh, but I was not able to find. Sorry, I was able to find, but I just actually, I mean, there are different places where it can be taken. So I just want to highlight the name. So in case you'd like to see more samples, uh, Google for credential provider sample RTM, and uh, there will be at least five samples. There will be a sample for wrapper. There will be a sample for cred UI. There will be there will be a sample for. Uh, Hardware events credential provider when some event happened and you need to like uh, refresh your UI or like login you by default. So that those has more more data. So you can you can you can look for those. Okay, now demo. <sighs> okay. So I will walk you through the code. I hope it won't, won't be very boring, uh, and I hope you will find it useful at some point. Because when I when I first started working with credential provider, I saw a lot of like methods. I saw a lot of uh, things that uh, like interface. Not 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 many. I mean, not not very huge amount of methods and interfaces. But still, there are a few things, and it was not that clear for me what is happening in in which particular case. And so that I I, I find it useful to just walk walk you through this and uh, just briefly describe what what is happening here so uh here's the uh, like one of those samples are, are opened and i have custom credential provider so i have this c sample provider this class implements credential provider itself my credential provider implements uh, two credentials basically two tiles it's uh, called cred window it's uh, it will show you custom window created and it has C sample credentials, basically default one which is provided by uh, the sample. And also, my uh, implementation has filter. So I will start from filter, since it has only one method, uh, and, and I was not implementing the, the other one I, I was speaking about because I was not implementing remote uh, stuff. Uh, so I will speak about filter. Again, uh, this method in co is called by the system. System provides uh, a list of providers. Uh, array with GUIDs system provides uh, an array uh, which basically tells is it allowed or not. And the, the easiest implementation and simplest implementation I have here is basically I check the GUID that is provided, like that resides in this array. In case this GUID is equal to mine, I tell system, okay, I'd like to show this provider. Otherwise, I uh, don't show it. So what I, by this implementation, I basically filtered out everything besides uh, my, my credential provider, and I will show this in the, in the real demo itself. Now let's go to credential provider. Uh, again, there are a few methods. Let me show stuff from here. There, there are a few methods like this. Set usage scenario, set serialization, advice, and advice. Uh, yeah, like those. Uh, so 
there are not so many, but uh, you need to implement uh, those methods and uh, I will explain you what, what they're for. And by the way, this samples itself has a comments here. So in case I will provide something in that way, you can uh, always read in the samples and uh, understand what is happening. So let's start, set usage scenario. Is uh, an API that is called by the system uh, at the very beginning uh, when it starts working with your, with your provider. By this, as I, as I pointed in, this, in the slides, uh, system tells you, uh, your provider which scenario it is right now and your provider is it else okay i'm going to work with that or not so in my case my provider works with two scenarios log on and unlock and it doesn't work with change scenario change password scenario cad ui and not for and not with uh plant nor with plant uh, provider uh, scenario as well so only two the next method is set serialization uh and here we have very very long description and i will try to to be short and in case you would like more information you will be able to read this basically this method is uh, used in two scenarios first scenario is a cred ui again this ui which you use to login to remote machine so this method is called uh, on your credential provider whenever a system would like to pre-populate some credentials for you to that box so for example username and if you if you click store my credentials so system will be able to Repopulate those like username and password, and maybe even log you in without uh, asking you to provide some data. Uh, so that's first thing, and second thing is uh, in remote uh, in remote logon. So if you recall, I told you about update remote credentials, and let me do this stuff. So update remote credentials thing. So here at the, in the in remote PC, whenever filter uh, obtains uh, credential data and your filter redirects, uh, for example, uh, that credential data to your credential provider. So on your credential provider, this method will be called. So you'll be, uh, uh, you'll be, you'll be getting uh, serialized, serialized data here, and you'll be able to deserialize it and do stuff that you would like to do with, the, with that data. Maybe even login by default without even showing UI to, to, to the user. But yeah, this method is like for remote login as well. Uh, now advice. So that's method uh, by this uh, method system like logon UI and credential provide uh, cred, cred UI provides a callback uh, so that my provider can use that callback to uh, work notify back something to the logon UI. Uh, obviously an advice when this is not needed anymore. Uh, now get field descriptor count. So by this call system understands how many uh, controls your tile your tile has and uh, it's very important to hear that uh, in case your provider implement uh, different amount like for example your provider implement two tiles like in my case i have two two credentials two tiles and uh, those two things displays different amount of controls like for for this for c sample credential i i will display full set of controls for uh, this credential, uh, I display only an image. However, uh, I like the system. Uh, it, it is crucial to say that, uh, like, to re to reply to the system here, that uh, the maximum amount of uh, controls your UI has. So, in case your UI has five control, like like one, two, four, and five, you should say here five. In case uh, everybody has like one, you, you should say one. And uh, the way how you then can hide them, it's a different way, but the, that number should be like the maximum number of controls you have. And that's something that says, states here as well. Uh, that's getting some data about your your controls, uh, like full descriptors, uh, like what, what they are, and uh, with probably some some text or something I don't recall exactly. Uh, the next one. It's get credential count. So by this method, UI uh, system understands how many credentials your credential provider provides. So in my case, I have two, uh, because again, I have default one, we have my, which will create a window. Uh, you may have one, you may have 10, it depends on your workflow, but basically this is how system understands how many you have. Uh, also, here is the flag, which is called auto logon with default. So in case we return true here, and set this default value to one of ours provider. So what system will do? 
after system calls this uh, this method, it will understand. Let, let's imagine that after login is uh, after login is set to true. So system will understand. Okay, I have to choose. I have to use uh, the credentials that are at index one, basically second one, like because we start from zero. I have to use the credentials that I have at index one, and I'm going to default login using those that credentials. At this point, once this method returns. Uh, system will call uh, a method on your credentials, like here at like which credentials, in my case, for example, this one, will call a method that will actually start serializing credentials to the system without showing UI at all. So that's how you'll be able to kind of after login, for example. And this case is described in a hardware sample uh, credential provider, and you'll be able to find it as well in, uh, in uh, this uh links that i show you uh, the last one is get credentials at so here we say how many credentials we support and here we actually return implementation for concrete credentials so here i have uh, in case i have one like first index uh, then i create like uh, the one the credentials that have full set of controls and in case i have uh, next uh, index i create my custom window uh, provider and that's it. Next one is uh, like some internal implementation, which is not related to to this stuff. Uh, and also, and now I will try to very brief, briefly walk you through a credential sample, uh, like from credential, uh, walk you through I credential provider credentials interface. But it has a bit more methods, but they should be straightforward. Uh, okay, so I will switch to the uh, CPP file. Advice the same as in previous one so by this method system uh, sends a system gives us an ability to have a callback which can be used to define some data for, for credential provider uh, for for system provide some data for system in my case i use uh, this uh, data because i i'm creating my own window and i'm getting a parent of that uh, like a handle of uh, logon window and i'd like my window to be child for that so this one that's why i have this uh, uh, kind of implemented here an advice, the same stuff. Uh, basically, we have advice on advice. When you deselect it, uh, like when the system doesn't need uh, uh, this callback anymore, it will call this method. Set selected. So this method is called uh, when you select your, your, your credential. So you, you recall those tiles. Whenever you select your uh, your tile, uh, system will call this method on your uh, on your on your credential on your tile. In my case, uh, I have implemented a code which which basically create a window. I have this uh, like message loop, and uh, yeah, it creates a window. You can do whatever you want here. Uh, I mean, what, what your work workflow requires. Uh, so this sets like the, the first method that has been called once you select your tile. Also, you can see that it has auto logon flag flag. So in case I return true here, I have false by default. But if I return true here system will uh, right after calling this method system will try to serialize credentials it will call a method that actually serializes credentials and we will go uh, to that method in the second set the selected again the same as set selected but vice versa whenever you select your provider uh, then uh, set selected is called when you select some other some other providers then set the selected is called on your provider now we have uh, methods for understanding the state of your fields like get field state and here uh, basically uh, my my provider uh, tells that uh, my credentials uh, states that like for example some controls are, are shown some controls are hidden and this is sent by this by the, this is uh, happening here get string value sets uh, sets uh, this parameter to to the value of the field uh, in this index so I have only one is the fourth one uh, for my tile name. It's uh, it's named custom windows. Everything else I just ignore. Set bitmap value again. The picture you can you can specify the picture here. Uh, get submit button value. So this is actually uh, this by this method uh, system understands next to which control it needs to display a submit button. In my case, I don't have submit button, uh, so I, I don't uh, do any, I do not, nothing here. But in case I open this one, for example, let me show you. Yeah, get submit button. So here, 
uh, this this kind of uh, identifier point it's a pointer to a field ID you want to the submit button to appear next to basically in this scenario uh, submit button will be next to uh, password field in my case again I don't have submit button I'm working with like device events uh, hardware uh, like I'm sending events and uh, that's that's how my syndication happens get string value the same oh sorry set string value to set some some string data to you to your control uh, whenever something is set to your control uh, get checkbox value again do, do get something from checkbox set checkbox value set something to checkbox the same for combo box I will skip those uh, it's just like manipulating with UIs with UI and, and it's not very important but here what we have the last one it's very that's actually the method that performs all the magic so by this method actually my credentials serializes how to say this my tile serializes my credentials uh, to the system so here you can see my name password and uh, other things uh, I would like to also highlight that uh, in order to serialize credentials into structure like into this uh, structure I guess uh, yeah you have to kind of uh, like it's not it's not that that trivial and uh why and those samples uh, that you can find that you will find in case you will be interested in that will provide you uh, this uh kind of implementation you, you will be able to, to to check and understand how how uh, actually like for example username and password are, are serialized like how, how they how and where they are placed and so on so that's very great to have this uh this information so that's but these samples are also very useful so here here they uh, do some username and password serialization and domain here they do some some another serialization some other things eventually they, uh, here i say okay my credentials are ready and i return from this method at this point uh, the credentials i serialized will be sent to win logon then to logon ui uh, sorry to log on and then to win log on and then to uh, local security authority for authorization and the very last method is report result it's, it might be optional as it stated here that method is used to to basically show the result of your authentication in case of failure it will show you an error otherwise uh, it will not be invoked I guess or maybe invoked uh, I, I'm not I'm not 100 sure but in case of <laughs> error it definitely will be invoked and there might be different types of errors for example uh, in case you have to implement change password scenario so uh, and you will fail due to change password is required uh, so it will be also happen in this report result stuff and here it's pretty simple just saying some some string like this incorrect username and password or your account is disabled but again it's useful to have it here to see how it's implemented and extended in case in case you need a uh, uh, different implementation and uh, yeah below it's my last stuff so that's it again I will highlight helper CVT here it's it's very useful uh, class I mean not class but it's very useful implementation because it has it shows you how data needs to be serialized uh, how like here for example it calculates the size or uh, that you're going to test uh look at its memory and do all those things so that's that's kind of not something that's very trivial I mean if in case you don't have this it might be tricky to understand how you should serialize and how you should provide data uh, okay uh, that's all basically from <laughs> code walkthrough and uh I hope you have some questions otherwise let's switch to a real demo I would say I will show you uh, my 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 system uh, how my credential provider works on that system and then I will also try to show you how you can debug that stuff uh, okay no questions then uh, let's uh, let's uh, switch to, to the kind of to show you what what I have what I have done in, in this messy code so I will use uh, VNC application like first I'd like to point you in case you need to develop credential provider it's better to use like for testing purposes uh, it's better to use another physical machine 
it is not very uh, kind of useful and handy to actually develop and test credential provider in the same machine in your work machine because uh, in order to test it you will have to lock your machine and in case you have problems you won't be able like you have locked your machine and now you have a problem you won't be able to attach to troubleshoot uh, attached by debugger to it and troubleshoot it and to, to understand what is actually happening so for that purpose i have another machine uh, or you can use a vm for example uh, but I have another machine and uh, I'm using Ultra VNC tool to actually connect to that machine so that I, it's not a remote session. It's a kind of on that another machine I will have a console session. So that's sometimes also very useful. So I'm connecting to it. Okay. So here is that other machine I will lock my system. And uh, yeah, so what you can see right now, you see uh, default default tiles basically from default credential from default password credential provider. Uh, so which means that only default password credential provider is now used uh, in here, and only it can be and only it can be used to actually serialize credentials. So I will log in and I will enable my credential provider now. Second. Sometimes take time to refresh. Okay. Um, I have it already registered. I will just go to, to the registry to. Sorry, I have. It's not. You can't see anything, right? Let me. Let me do like this. Is it better? Yep. Yeah, we can. Okay. So I will go to. Uh, I have a favorite tab uh, so that I can navigate to credential provider tab without doing any search so here as you can see i have already registered my credential provider but i i added this underscore so that now it can't understand uh, that it, like where which object which come object actually implements it so it, it's not loaded so i'm going to delete that stuff and let me lock my workstation again. okay so yeah now you can see that i have the same default credential provider, password credential provider, but now you see uh, two additional things that appear. Uh, one uh, is my first of all, those two things are implemented by my uh, credential provider, and my credential provider provides two tiles or two credentials. In current case, which like one is all control providers, basically the credential provider that has all controls that are allowed by the Windows. So it's like an image large text here edit box to provide your username uh, password to provide your password and submit button if you recall when i was going through the code uh, and i opened this default uh, tile and i i did explain this get submit button value so that's how actually uh, this credential provider told the system that okay i'd like submit button to be placed next to password i, I could have placed it here for example but yeah uh, then checkbox some combo box and a uh, links so that, that's all uh, we have here. And now I also have my, my custom provider, which I have created a very dummy window, which you can use to provide your credentials and login. And you will try to login. In case if I click login, you can see the correct username and password are provided because those are not added. But I mean, I, mean, I will show you workable workflow. <laughs> it's buggy code, so don't judge me strictly. It, I, I mean, with this C2 UI, it's not a problem. Right now so what i will show you next i will log in with this one first and then i will enable my filter let me provide username let me provide credentials so i logged in uh, let me now enable my filter so that and my filter is implemented in a way as you saw in the code that only uh, only my provider will be shown so I, I enabled it as well. Let me lock my system once more. Oh, okay. I added a message box somewhere. I already prepared for the bugging, so uh, that's that's expected. Ignore. Ignore. Again, right now you can see. Don't you you don't uh, see those uh, what to say. Native password credential providers, uh, you, you see just mine. Uh, so only my credential provider is seen here, and only mine can be used, so no, no other provider. So let me then 
and authenticate with this one. Yep, and as you can see, I logged in successfully. Now, uh, if no questions regarding that, I, I will I will try to show you some troubleshooting how 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 you can debug and troubleshoot in case you have some problems with credential provider. But I have to do to, to make this a little smaller. And also, I I think I have uh, all the binaries uh, in my provider, so that we have a message box and we don't have message box here. So imagine that in case you implement a filter and imagine that you would like to uh, troubleshoot at the very, very beginning of this logging process. So the, the, the best place to, to provide some, like how to say, some message box, let's say, because actually message box is useful or some sleep for, for some amount of seconds so that you can attach remotely to the machine is, is in this method filter because this method, method is called uh, very, very first uh, uh, on your filter. So let me go like this. Okay. So that stuff. Also now I have to copy my files. On my test machine. By the way, this is Cred UI. Yeah. Yeah, this one. So that's that's one thing that I have to do. I need to so that my PDBs and uh, things uh, kind of correspond to actual dialogue. I have to have fresh dialogue here. The other thing I have to do, and I hope you you are familiar with that. In case you don't, I think I hope I will give you some small initial overview for that stuff. Since this is a remote machine, I I need to use remote debugging tool uh, which Microsoft provides to. To use my Visual Studio and connect to that remote debugging tool, basically to connect to a remote machine and actually try to do some debugging. So I have this tool here. I will I will launch it. And it's provided in case you use Visual Studio. It's provided. It's installed with Visual Studio. You can find. You can look for. Uh, I mean, you, you can find it in Visual Studio installation package. Uh, or in Kremita loaded separately, it actually doesn't matter. So I'm going to start this executable. What will it will do? It will, it will start some weird thing, uh, which needs to be configured at some point, but configuration is pretty simple. Uh, all, all I need to do is actually make sure that no authentication is required and allow any user to debug. I mean, I know that I will be debugging, so that's not, not the case. And uh, also make idle time be bigger. Because in case you, you put small time and, for example, you you caught some uh, breakpoint and you are kind of investigating stack trace, or doing, I mean, looking for what, what variables are used, what they have, it might take some time. And in case it will be more than this idle time, you might be disconnected from, from remote machine. So that's all. I have configured it. Now uh, let me lock it. So now we should we should again see this uh, assert message box. This one, that's what I. So at this point, my system stopped. So nothing ha is happening. Now I will use uh, Visual Studio and will actually attach to my remote machine. I will put breakpoint here. Uh, you can do this attach to the process. Uh, you have to connection type. You have to choose uh, remote no authentication. Uh, connection target, uh, you have to provide, sometimes you can click find and it, sometimes it works. I, 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 don't, I don't know why it sometimes works, sometimes it uh, doesn't, but uh, easily, easily would be just provide uh, your IP address manually.
that is on the port uh, port uh, that we we uh, okay let me show you I, I will I will show you next time so th there was a port which we had to provide uh, that is kind of opened uh, so that you can attach and we have to provide the same port here enter and now I see processes on that remote machine I have to check show uh, show process for all, all users as you can see I have session zero I have session five here so uh, there are a few sessions and uh, I'd like to see all of those uh, at some point depending on what I'm debugging um, so I, I always check this show all process okay. now uh, as you if you recall uh, this hierarchy I showed you at the very beginning our credential provider is loaded by uh, logon UI so basically you, what you need to do it's is find logon UI process and attach to it. Oh, okay. I had I had to start uh, uh, my provider. Sorry, remote debugger with uh, admin rights. So one second, let me clear something out. Let's start. I will close this instance. Yes. Yeah. So by the way, this this utility also uh, supports command line. So all those things that I'm configuring, you can configure through command line. And uh, even more, I, uh, I would... yeah. Uh, and here we can see the port that we need to specify. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Roman. So yeah, that's the port that we need to use. So by default it's 40 26 you can change it or i'm not sure why you might need to do this but in case you have to you can but make sure you provide the same port in, in visual studio hello i'm using to debug let's increase the size okay and let's do it again so again let me lock my system We see this uh, assert message box and let me attach this one. Yeah, log on UI. Oh, brilliant. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> so I I started uh, the <laughs> the bugger was the same rights without uh, without actually launching it as an administrator. Sorry for that. Um, next last last try have to right click and select it run as administrator okay now it will work options oh I did sign up It's not a problem. I hope it will. Um, it will yeah. It, uh, so I have signed it up for my user, but still, we have this message box here. Let me now touch my debugger. I suspect I'm you sorry, you made a sign out and because yes. of that debugger is closed. Uh, sorry for that mess. Um, I promise it will be the last time it will start. I guess it looks like uh, 
um, work process. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I locked my machine and let me switch back to the actual environment. Catch. No, oh, sorry, uh, Visual Studio. Uh, sorry, I have a comment. Uh, as I know, it's not necessarily to define the port. The API address should be enough. Let's check. Uh, yes, just put the enter. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, it was prepopulated by default. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's uh, pick uh, Logon UI. I hope it will work. It is. So it loads all uh, like uh, dialogs, PDBs, and so on. Now let me, uh, I will make the screen smaller. Uh, we don't need this right now. Let me just click ignore. And as you can see, my breakpoint is triggered and I can, I can like debug and see what is happening in my filter method. So you can see, okay, the first, the first GUID was uh, picture password logon provider, which some window, like default Windows provider. We filtered it out. Now we go further. Next one was uh, MP provider and so on. Basically we have 13 providers. And uh, at the end, we will have I mean, like still 13 providers, but uh, only one will be allowed since only one has true in this structure uh, added. Uh, now, yeah, let me press F5. And here I had another breakpoint already in set, set usage scenario method. So that in case you don't have filter, but you'd like to, to debug from the very beginning of credential provider lifetime, uh, you will have to provide this. You, you can have you can provide this assert uh, here, basically, at this point. And, uh, and that will be the very first call which system does for your provider. So here, yeah, uh, we can troubleshoot as well. We can see, okay, usage scenario is log on. Fine, I support that. I return is okay, let me break. Uh, here, let me actually break, put a breakpoint when we actually serialize credentials. Oh, I have it. Okay, so I uh, let it work. Filter was called once more. I'm not sure why. Okay, now, now we see provider. Let me provide uh, credentials here. So I will provide username. I provide the password. So once I click login, and that's actually, yeah, I will I will I will walk you through it uh, through this process. So once I click login, it's not default submit button because like uh, on, on this provider, we have a default submit button. So once I click that button, system calls get uh, get serialization method and serializes data to to the system. However, I, I can't uh, use the same uh, submit button and I can't tell my button to, to kind of somehow send message to submit button and use that button. That's not possible. So the way how I do my login process, I actually, once I click, uh, once I click lo login, what happens? My uh, provider, and yeah, I have an image here, only one control, uh, my provider, uh, my creden uh, my provide uh, my credential my tile my credentials like th this tile basically it notifies credential provider okay uh, I have I have credentials uh, obviously I can't do nothing with those because I don't I don't have submit button so please tell system uh, logon UI that something has changed so that logon UI now re enumerate uh, can reenumerate all all tiles and uh, uh, by default, we'll use one thing in my issue. That's that's very important stuff. Let's go here. Not here, but here. So let's let's go here. So once I click login button, as I said, uh, my my credentials will communicate to credential provider saying, "Okay, credential provider, something has changed, and please." Tell logon UI to re-enumerate all all credential uh, all all uh, all all credential provider and all tiles. So how this is done? 
So first of all, whenever once my credential provider was created, advice method was called, and I uh, I took this uh, implementation of event. Uh, and this uh, like a synchronous callback mechanism has one method that can be used, which is credentially changed. So by this, when once I set this uh, to logon UI, logon UI understands that that something has changed somewhere, and now logon UI needs to re-enumerate all the providers. And now, next time when it will be re-enumerating those providers, it will go to this method. I will have this flag set to true. It's internally like my 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 head coded stuff like like this. So I uh, I set once I click login. Let me show you this. Once I click login, I I, I I'm here. So I'm setting this flag to true. I'm I'm telling uh, system okay credential has changed. Please do something. So one now now asynchronously system calls this API. So basically it, it re-enumerates all the credentials that are within the providers. And uh yeah, I'm telling okay, I have two, uh, default one is zero, and here I said false, but then I see I have a flag true. Okay, so now I'm telling I'd like to use the credential tiles that I have under index one, and I like this credential tile to be used to login by default. So once I release this method when i send this to the system yeah it will call th this method again to create those credentials but uh, once i release this method uh system will directly call uh this one get serialization so system will not do those ui showing won't do all those things it will it will just directly call that methods to method to serialize credentials so let's see again i'm here i'm releasing this five and now i'm already here on the UI, we still see our UI. I'm already here. I, I will like serialize this data. And after I release this one, as well, let's check it report result with the call back to success. I'm releasing this get serialization. So at this point, my credentials are passed to the system for login. And uh, this, so I, I release that. Yeah, the report result is called success as well. Release, and as you can see, I, I have logged into the system. So at this point, uh, like why, why I decided to show you this, uh, you will be able to find this technique in uh, events, uh, event-based uh, sample. So let me show you. So we have this samples here, like it's all control sample, it's a sample credential provider with few controls, cred UI sample, hardware event sample. So this in this sample you have you, you may find uh, kind of an information about how how these events can be sent and uh, what you need to do and so on and you can adjust this uh, for your uh, implementation if needed and there is also a sample for routing credential provider there is no sample for filter because filter is pretty simple uh, the one big problem for not problem but uh, pain part of filter is this one and yeah that's uh, that needs to be implemented kind of uh, appropriately and uh, yeah the deserialization of credentials it's not not trivial stuff to do but i i don't have that implementation here so that's basically it that's all i have again links here uh by the way uh, like the name it's, uh, that's the sample uh also uh here we have a links uh there, like between the, like in that link, you can find uh, an article about uh, actually an order of uh, calling uh, methods, like uh, which methods are called to, in which order, like for example, set 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 set, uh, set usage scenario, then get uh, get credentials add, and so on and so forth. So some of those links has the data. So in case you'll be interested, you can you can find it here. Also, in case you'll be interested more in how Gina is implemented, I'm not sure <laughs> for what reason, but maybe. Uh, you can also find it here, uh, like documentation about the gym. But uh, that's all. Uh, so thank you, Andre, uh, for sharing this uh, information. You remind me that I'm at university when uh, students uh, usually, in somehow, tries to obtain administrative passwords or credentials. Actually, just uh, sometimes even. Um, Rights, administrator rights, and after that they install MS Gina, and in that in uh, and in that way they sniff um, they sniff um, users' credentials. 
Um, however, yeah, that, that was fun for students. However, how exactly it can be used for, uh, from a business perspective? You mean credential provider? Yeah, MS Gina actually calls those interfaces. How, uh, what is the uh, business cases? So, uh, is it possible to use it somehow um, in our work? Or do we have some such projects um, currently? Do we yeah. have such projects? Uh, yeah, I, I see the question. So, so first of all, um, yeah, let's differentiate between Gina, MS Gina and credential provider. But uh, those are different uh, like implementation and different concepts. However, uh, what they might have in common uh, is uh, to give, uh, like, to build some system, for example. That's what, if I understand correctly, that's what you are asking about. Like, what the use case of customizing this credential provider and uh, doing something different is it since in Rust. So there might be few use cases. Like, first of all, let me open the screen. Imagine that you uh, you don't like this, like, for example, this image, which is in the background, or you make, uh, obviously it can be changed through, through settings, but imagine that you would like to have this be dynamically changed uh, from user to user. For example, if you know that one user is like an illustrator, you would like to see some, to, to show some data here. Uh, when, for example, for regular user, you might want to see, show some other data. So that's, that's first use case. Another use case, imagine that you would like to support multi-factor authentication. So for example, uh, you, you built a system, uh, like by default you, into the windows, uh, you can log in with password, fingerprint, uh, certificate, uh, like there are different means that you can use, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure, and I might be wrong here. I'm not sure if there is an ability to configure windows via policies uh, or somehow to ask, for example, Windows, whenever I'm going to log in, please ask me for password and fingerprint or like password and certificate. I'm not sure if that's possible. Uh, but what you can do as a kind of, a, I mean, uh, not you, I mean, as like um, uh, as a product owner, for example, you, you, may, you may find this as an opportunity to uh, create more secure mechanism of uh, logging in, into the system. So what you can propose, uh, okay, I can customize my credential provider. i sorry, I can customize credential provider. Uh, I will build a system on, uh, which will require user to provide username and password, proximity card, for example, fingerprint or something else. And then I can make, uh, I will make this system to be configurable so that a user will be required in order to log in into the windows, user will be required to provide two factors like username and password and fingerprint, for example. So now you, you built all that stuff and you customize credential provider. Whenever user provides a password, for example, uh, this data is sent to your backend. Uh, backend retrieves your information, like your username and password, and it says, okay, for that particular user, I have to enforce him to, to provide second factor. Your backend replies to your credential provider saying, okay, credentials are fine, but now I need to have a fingerprint to be provided for, from that user. And your credential provider changes UI and shows like fingerprint, uh, like image or something like that. Now user uses his finger, presses his finger on the fingerprint. Again, this data is sent to your backend. Your backend validates that fingerprint and replies back to the system, okay, this user, is logged in with us successfully using two-factor authentication. And in addition, given that your system is a kind of, uh, how to say this, uh, your system is uh, like secure system and it's trusted by, for example, customers so that they can trust uh, in case two-factor authentication happened on your site, it means that this is valid uh, stuff. So now your system replies back uh, to credential provider saying, okay, I have validated password, I have validated user uh, fingerprint. So now you can proceed with further authentication into the system. So serializing, serializing just username and password into the Windows. So that's another use case. And uh, yeah, then, and there might be more. So uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. For example, it also, could be used um, in our environment um, and uh, user can enter not just only own credentials, but also, for example, for Duo mobile mm -hmm. authorization, something like that, SMS code, um, mm -hmm. et cetera, whatever. Yeah. Um, but actually I'm interested um, exactly, uh, do we have such customers? Um, uh, yes, we do. 
so, there are our customers uh, who actually uh, who uh, wants who, to who yeah yeah who actually changes the default behavior of the windows and uh, changes i mean credential provide they have their own credential providers they implement their own credential providers they have like the uh, system like which provides sso functionality so that's why they need to have your data uh, being on their backend so that they can understand who the user is so that they can provide credentials for another applications to be used but yeah we do have such projects uh, okay great and um uh, uh, do you know um does uh, for example provider uh, use um, some um additional security check for code because actually it means that um, such uh, provider works directly with users credentials uh yeah uh, so uh, there are a few few things so first of all uh you can implement additional layer of uh, security uh, like implementing your code you can implement additional layer of security for example passing those credentials from credential provider to your backend may be protected may, may, may happen through protected channel for example like uh, the, the package itself can be encrypted and uh, and and so on but that's the first thing the second thing is that uh, windows itself uh, has an ability to encrypt passwords uh, by the way in the sample as well uh, all those samples there are an api call which is called Check. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Windows saves uh, such um, yeah, credentials some... as uh, hashes. Um... No, no, not hashes. It, it, it can encrypt you... those, and uh, maybe they can use uh, an encrypted way to actually serialize, serialize in the system. Uh, however, I, in addition, I'd like to say, uh, yeah, that's that's great. You you recall uh, your uh, kind of study time, and uh, however. In case, like in customers, for example, if somebody has access to the system having administrator privileges, it means that system is already compromised. And at this point, that user who compromised the system can do whatever it wants to do. So it may not, uh, I mean, it, it may uh, compromise. I'm not um, clearly disagree, uh, disagree with you. However, also not fully agree with you because um, Administrator privileges on the local machine, it's not the same as um, administrator rights uh, on the uh, domain controller. And uh, you can control only um, a local machine. For example, user uh, can have such rights. Um, and in this way, it's possible to install MS uh, Gina and uh, then ask a real administrator to enter his credentials on this machine. For example, something who block it, my screen, I can't log in. So this is one of the way for attackers. Yeah, um, but again, that attackers at the first place needs to have administrator rights to install the gene. Uh, yeah, uh, but this is can be done by um, simple user, just by, um, for example, any developer who has a desktop uh, can be the local administrator on his machine. And that's why it's very simple to install such um, okay. Touch modify it yeah, um, for sure i am an administrator on my machine and i can install this stuff but if we are talking about real customers real customer environment like for example some um i don't know some no i absolutely agree with you yeah uh, however um my point is that uh, it's extremely dangerous mechanism and it should be implemented in the right way Oof, yeah so that's for sure so like that's uh, for sure like you should consider all and more hour uh, on the project uh, like on projects that use this stuff that are also happening such things as threat modeling where uh, like uh, uh, like some developers uh, uh, architects and other thing, uh, other guys uh, who are ex subject matter experts actually uh, like analyzes the system analyzes weak, weak parts of the system and then uh, understands what uh, what actually should or must uh, be changed uh, to, to kind of uh, support uh, to be fully like secure at this point and make sure that credentials are not uh, leaked because yeah you, you're you're right actually having user usage of username and passwords by itself it's not not the best uh, stuff so windows is moving forward so you know this windows hello stuff where you can use your face like again fingerprint and other things so uh yeah changes like this 
model most likely, and, well, not most likely, but may change in future. So in future, you, you may not be using your password, but something else. Yeah, Andrei, uh, I just tried to understand that um, does such project um, have some um, security review and that's all? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, the great, one, great. The one, uh, at least I know, they, they do have such things. Okay, okay. So I don't have any more questions. Thank you.